the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we celebrate the triumph of Orthodoxy in this great first Sunday of Lent. Uh, we remember, certainly, uh, the what that means in terms of, as at the end of the service, we'll have our procession with icons around the church. Uh, and we give thanks to God for um, the victory uh, that Orthodox Christianity had some uh, 1,200, what year are we? 1,200 years ago, uh, in the year 843. Uh, and yet, this celebration of the triumph of Orthodoxy, of the victory of uh, the, the Arcano duels, those who supported the icons over the Arcano class, is really uh, incidental or even accidental to our celebration of this first Sunday of Great Lent. This first Sunday that we hear that great gospel that we just heard, the words, come and see, as Philip went to his brother Nathaniel and told him to come and see. And we have found the Son of God, the King of Israel. And so this Lenten season, we journey together and we heed those words of Philip to come and see. Our Lenten journey is not just about Sunday morning services, but rather we journey together in prayer throughout the week. In fact, if we skip all the midweek services, we miss much of what God in His wisdom has given to us in His church that we might come and see the very Son of God. The epistle reading that we heard, St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, speaks about the Old Testament fathers who in faith had sought God, who in faith had come to follow Him, and in faith had not seen what was to come of the promise given to them. In the Gospel we heard, Jesus gives us an answer to that that we might see the Son of God in His glory with the angels ascending and descending. This journey of Lent brings us to see the Son of God in His glory. It brings us to see God Himself revealed in the flesh to us, that we with Philip and Nathaniel with Peter and Andrew, with all the apostles, and even with those Old Testament prophets and forefathers, that we too might see the Son of God. The season of Lent was, in the early church, a time of preparation. Not just preparation to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, which has occurred, but rather to prepare ourselves to participate in that resurrection and to prepare the new catechumens to come and see as well. Really, it's a little bit scary, I think, to think about how that happened in the early church. There were rumors certainly that went around about these Christians who were cannibals, eating the flesh and blood of someone. There were rumors about these rituals that would go on, about a death that would occur, and yet the catechumens would come in, not getting an explanation of all that beforehand, but rather they would come in seeking God. And so they would come through this process of this great catechumenate, starting in the Lenten season, they would hear the Word of God. They would hear the stories 
of the Old Testament scriptures. They would learn the Psalms that they might know how God would reveal himself to us and to them. And it wasn't until after baptism that they would hear of the mystery of God and what we think of as the sacraments that we have in his church. We are no longer catechumens. We who sit in these chairs and who come together to worship God and to receive the very body and blood of Christ. We have been enlightened, we have been illumined, as we say at all the baptisms that we have here and as we said at your own baptism as well. And yet, we too return during this great Lenten fast to prepare ourselves. We too come to the beginning of this fast to hear the words of Philip saying, Come and see. We too remember the promises of the Old Testament that we might know their fulfillment in the new. And so as we have begun our Lenten journey, our pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the cross and to the resurrection, we do so not just as another year that we might remember what happened in the past, but we do so that we too might enter in to our new life. That like the catechumens, we might come to know God. That like the catechumens, we too might come to hear his word and to prepare ourselves, not for a second baptism, for there is but one baptism, but that we might be renewed, refreshed, and indeed that we might rise each day to the newness of life that we have been given in our baptisms, and that we might come here to partake at the heavenly table of the very body and blood of Christ. That the mysteries of God that he has given to us here in his church that have been revealed to us, might be made known to us, and might be made real to us, that we might come to know Him in His fullness. So I encourage you this Lenten season to not let it just be here on Sunday mornings, where we see the altar covered in dark colors but rather that we might participate in it to, as fully as we are able. That we might come and hear the wonderful hymns of the church. That we might refresh ourselves during the week on the pre-sanctified holy gifts. And that we might sing with St. Romanos, the Melodist, the Agathist hymn, the Theotokos, that with all the saints, with all the angels and archangels, we might come to worship and to know God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.